Hey, qué rollo, quiero mandar un saludo a mi amigo Goodfella, de parte de tu amigo Jaime Munguía. Un abrazo, carnal. Ánimo. All right, man. Al Heyman let Adrian Broner go to Black Prime, all right? So apparently, people saying, well, Black Prime Edworth is only $5 million, and how they got eight figures for Bud, and, and this, that, and the third. Like I said before, man, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. You know what I'm saying? People, you know, talk about uh, Forbes earlier. You know, them niggas don't be accurately. How they know how much money? They looking at deals. They ain't looking at what you, real estate and all that type of shit, but... A lot of times, niggas be owning stuff that people don't know. That's why they don't know how much Al Heyman worth. I think one a few years ago, I said fifteen million dollars. You out your damn mind? He worth way more than that. Well, Jay Z said, "Man, you tell them about Forbes. They forgot to calculate what I did with the raw. God, what song that was? I think it was off American Gangster. But I don't be believing that shit, nigga. They be, oh, he worth this much money, nigga. Be like, well, I got that in my pocket right now." So, I don't be going off with the internet, say, all the time. But apparently, they got money to fuck with uh, Broner. They probably had to buy that contract from Al Heyman. So, or maybe Al Heyman was just like, I ain't letting you go to Eddie Hearn, or I ain't letting you go to Queensbury, or I ain't letting you go to Top Rank. But you can go to Black Prime, because I don't think they're going to be successful. Or maybe Al Heyman headed over to Black Prime. Don't never know. Black Prime could be his shit. You never know. Like I said, you don't know what he on, but what do I think about it? Good for Adrian Broner. He ain't able to get the fight again. Hopefully, he got his money that was owed to him from Al Hamer. You know, then he goes around so I can talk boxing again. So, he ain't got no non-disclosure agreement, no gag order on him. You know, he still was running his mouth, and I, and I fuck with that. Because how you going to try to thank, make a nigga thank you after a fight? And make somebody praise you after a fight. And a lot of them niggas living in hell over there. A lot of them niggas doing Lyft and Instacart and shit. And I put an emphasis on a lot of them. And then Al Hammond can't even, can't even get them no fights before the holiday season. And people acting like that ain't no problem. Like, who don't want to make money before Christmas? That's why boxing is always jam-packed in the fall. Usually jam-packed in the fall. Why do you think it's jam-packed in the fall? Just like you got to... You know, you got to make money. They got to make money to put toys and food and clothes on the table. Them niggas, just because you say, well, he made $100 million his last fight. Man, them niggas run through that shit. Or he made $10 million. Taxes. Got to pay their team. They run through that shit. That's what people don't don't understand about, you know, basketball and football players. A lot of them niggas live paycheck to paycheck like you and me. Ho! Ho! Just like you get a little promotion... And you live above your means, them niggas live above their means. That's a great habit to have, to live below your means. And a lot of niggas can't do that. They got a hundred million dollars, they want you to know they got a hundred million dollars. You know? They want to go buy chains and all this. Is, you see basketball players do that shit and it just turn your stomach. And then you go turn them chains and them watches in and they ain't worth it ain't worth 20% of what you paid for it. That's called a bad investment. You go buy a patent for 100K and you return that patent 10 years later and it's worth 150 or a quarter million or a million dollars, nigga. That's a good investment. Guns and butter. And that's a real thing. It might be in the movie, baby boy, but that's a real thing. You gotta understand, there's people out here making well below what NBA players and NFL players are making. They more financially secure for their future. And that's just the honest truth. But nonetheless, you know, he let AB walk. So, I mean, that's one domino falling. If we get a few more fighters that move on to different places, you know, then I think people start to really believe what's being said about PBC. You know, you got proof with them not having no fight days through the fall, which is the most lucrative time in boxing. Boxing tend to put on its best product in the fall. But you can't explain nothing to these niggas because they don't know nothing. They don't. They haven't been watching boxing that long. When the last time boxing had a dead fall? Even in the pandemic, the fall was better than this, especially pertaining to PBC. Even in the pandemic. When the 
last time you seen a far so so pedestrian with them? They only got two fucking fight dates. One of them was Wilder on pay per view, and David Morrell, which I don't even think David Morrell and them really consider PBC like that, even though they are because Luis the Cubist. But that's it. And find door three. Showbox got more fight fight dates than PBC. And I've been stopped watching Showbox. No offense. I've been stopped watching that shit. I got better things to do on my Friday night. Just sit there and watch some, some niggas I might not see ever fight again. If you a superstar, I'll catch you on the back end. Like the Mal Heyman checks. But... I mean, that's one domino. One domino ain't make ain't enough to make people believe. Now, if a few more dominoes get to fall in this shit, then I think some people, I think people may wake up and be like, damn. He he might be right. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. And your mama. But I think a lot of people turn around and be like, damn, for real? Yeah, my bad. You know, niggas in Detroit can't drive. But, but yeah, him letting AB, I think if we get a couple more fighters, I think the big one, like, small guy, but the big one would be if Gary Russell walked away too. Two guys that Al Heyman, most people thought Al Heyman wouldn't let walk away. If they walk away, then I think a lot of people are like, you know, but maybe he might just survive some people. But, you know, people want him gone. Anybody, you know, know what's good for boxing want him gone. And people be saying, why you don't like Al Heyman? I mean, dude. I mean, I got like thousands of videos explaining why I don't like the man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He do the same shit Bob Aaron did. did. That Bob Aaron was, was accused of doing in the beginning. You know, that's the crazy shit about it. He do the same shit Bob was accusing him of doing. They was accusing Bob of doing. Not making big fights, stopping big fights. It's the same shit. But like I said before, people keep asking the question. I mean, look, look, look at look at what Showtime thinks. Look at what Fox thinks. I'm not in the minority there. You know, I just know what good boxing supposed to look like. And shout out to Adrian Broner. And people say, well, Adrian Broner's done and nobody cares. And, Let's see who else, who else kind of slide up out of there. And maybe nobody else slide out of there. Maybe they go back to Showtime. They extend the pack in January. And we ain't talking about nothing. Maybe Showtime, you know, Al Hammond calls Showtime Bluff. And they continue their partnership. I wouldn't rule that out. I should kind of like still leaning towards. I think Al Hammond's still going to be around in boxing in some capacity. And I think... The most likely scenario is he's still going to be rocking with Floyd. I mean, walking with Espinosa and Showtime. We'll see. But historically, going to the top of the year, it's slow. But I find it like to get it in before the holidays, especially before Christmas and New Year's. They like to get it in before Christmas and New Year's. And then, you know, they take the beginning of the year off and then come back around the spring. Right around, you know, St. Patrick's Day when you start heating. I remember one year it was it was boxing started it started off hot in January. It was by HBO days. But historically, you know, it's it got a slow start to the new year. That's really its down season. You know, it's the, the down season is the beginning of the year. You know, spring is when it heat up. Summer is when it's kind of like I'll say simmering and be nice. And then you know in the fall that's they that's they they hottest season. You know, lining up with playoff baseball to return to hockey, NBA basketball, NCAA uh, basketball. But I'm, I'm shocked Ed Brennan was gonna hope Broner got his money. You know, that's so all you can you can hope about. Hopefully, he got his money, left with every dime and penny or penny he was, he was owed to him. But you know, that ain't none of my business. You know, and maybe him pulling out the Omar Figueroa fight was was a statement. And now he said, I can talk boxing again. Good for him. Good for him. Putting gag order on, again, putting gag order on fighters where they can't speak to, speak on shit. It's just crazy to me. And it sounds like Al Heyman, a narcissist. 
And when you can't, when you got a, you, when you got a move like you got money on your head, that's always a bad sign. You want to do business with a dude that you can't find. So if he run off with your money, you can't find him. You can't even serve him with a lawsuit because you don't know where to go. He ain't never where he say he gonna be at. He don't show up to the fights where you can serve him at or nothing like that. You know, y'all sit down at a disclosed location that y'all never catch him at again. Allegedly. So who, who wanna do who wanna do big business with a guy like that? He has swindled, allegedly swindled and finessed so many people. He put the biggest finesse move in boxing history. And what's so funny is allegedly Don King was telling Floyd Mayweather how to get his game tight and get his game together. And Floyd ain't listen. And Floyd ain't listen. But then again, when you when you can Don King and you finesse so many people, you know, you think he would know about a thing about a finesse. You thought you think he would. And you, you know, but Floyd ain't no businessman. And I'm gonna eventually talk about 50 Cent and Floyd. Cause y'all niggas don't like to read, apparently, dude. I'm gonna talk about that, and, I, and I'm, I'm exposed every crevice of that. Cause y'all, y'all, I'm gonna show y'all how shiesty Al Heyman was. It's all public information, and I ain't gonna say a word about it right now. Cause then somebody gonna, you know, steal my idea and you know, steal where you need to go. I'm good. I didn't try to be, you know, put my head together with niggas and and break bread and do shit in boxing. All they, you know, in, in general. All niggas do is hate. You got a few real niggas out there, but all niggas do is hate. They want to be in that position. They don't want to play their part. You know? So I I do all the groundwork. I I take all responsibility for my failure and success if it's on my shoulder. Because I can eat that. But nonetheless, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. The subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance of notifications. We go live and drop a video. Financially, you want to support the channel. Cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Venmo, CJ Good 313. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Podcast, Google Podcast, the whole nine. Appreciate the love support. Peace.